welcome back to another discussion of how to do artificial intelligence in R. Uh, and in this particular case, we're going to talk about the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. But before I get to that, I need to make a couple of quick little um, small notes. First of all, I want to make sure everyone knows that all the files that I'm going to be using in this class, I will make available on the Moodle so you can get access to them uh, and kind of check your work later if you want. Uh, the other thing is that we're going to have to spend some time talking about things like installing packages, which really don't have to do with writing the actual R code, but they uh, make those packages available today. So I'm going to go through that. But before I get there, right, let's go through what the code is actually doing so far. So um, the first thing you'll see is that, you know, I'm just going to set my working directory right at the top. Um, and you'll notice uh, it gave me this error uh, that I can't. And that's because, so if it says cannot change working directory, that usually means that your directory is not typed in correctly for some reason. And, you know, one way, as we talked about, is to use the files command to kind of navigate to it and then use the more to set it. And if you do a set as working directory now, you'll get exactly where you are, right? And so if you'll notice, I had AI space class, and I just, for some reason, I call that directory AI. So this must have been what I called it last year, and this is what I'm calling it this year, right? So um, that's the difference between it. Now, the next two things are reading in a couple of libraries. And the classifier library, the class, if you want to know what this is, it is a package, right? that um, basically gives you access to a bunch of algorithms like k-nearest neighbors um, and other things to help you understand how to do classifiers. And that's built into R, right? But this next one, E1071, it is not built into R. Uh, and so you might, when you execute that, get an error, right, that basically says that, um, um, that uh, it, it cannot find that package, right? And we're going to use this. This basically just got some standard kind of functionalities for doing things like random forests and other algorithms that we might be using later in the class, right? Uh, I think there might be the support vector machine that I use in this one. Is it? Yeah, it is. So uh, that's why we're reading it in right now, right? Um, and so you might run into that error. Now, what do you do when you run into error? Well, it gives you an option in RStudio usually to just install the package if it can't find it. And so you can just hit yes and it'll install it. Or, you know, if you if you really want to look into it, you can go up to the tools bar, right? And there's an install packages option. And this will bring up a window where you can now search for that package. So I can say I want to search for E1071, right? And it'll find it. And you can just install it directly from there. And uh, you can, you always want to click this install dependencies. Because what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that any packages that E1071 needs that you don't have installed are also installed, right? Um, so that's that's a good way to do it, right? You can just do it that way. Um, and um, and this is just saying that I already have these packages, so I don't actually need to install them. But hopefully it won't take very long for you, right? And it'll come down and install it right as you can see right there, right? Um, and so that's the install packages option. You can also check for package updates on any of your packages, right, to see uh, if you need to update them at all. Um, we could go ahead and update all of them if you want, um, and that's a, a good uh, way to do it. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and do it real quickly. Um, okay, I skipped ahead a little bit because it took longer than I thought it would to actually um, install the updates. But now I know I have all the updated packages. Everything's up to date. Um, and it should work fine. Uh, you might get a couple questions like, do you want to update from source files, right, et cetera? Um, you could say yes or no to them. If you say no, it'll just use the previous binaries. If you say yes, it may try and compile them and it may fail, right? But if it doesn't fail, that's always good, right? So anyways, don't worry about it too much. You got the packages, you got them installed now. So we're gonna go on to learning about k neighbors, right? So, um, so, one of the things we're going to do, so we're going to use um, a, a different set of data. This is the data that we talked about a little bit in the first set of the seminar when we talked about the um, examples from banking data about whether or not someone adopts, um, is, is willing to take a new offer, a telemarketing offer based upon previous interactions, right? And so this data has things like how long the call was, how much they talk to them, things like that, right? And and trying to understand whether or not they're going to accept the offer, right? Uh, and so this data um, 
if you look at it, you know, we're going to read it in. And then if we want to look at it, let's go ahead and look at it, right? You can see that we have things like the age of the person, their job, their marital status, their education, right? Um, whether or not they've defaulted in the past, the duration of their last phone call, how many campaigns they've had, and the outcome of their previous calls, right? And so, and then here's the Y variable, which just tells you whether or not they, they accept the new offer, right? So we wanna build a model that is going to predict which of our customers are likely to respond to a telemarketing offer. And that, if you remember correctly, we wanna build a predictive model. And so if we wanna build a predictive model, one of the things we first have to do is we have to actually um, divide the data into some sort of training and testing. Um, and so what I did was I read the data in, and then what this is going to do is going to divide the data into training and testing. And I just did a 70-30 split, which is a fairly typical first split if you're if you're kind of don't know the data and you're kind of working with it from the beginning. And it, a lot of it depends upon how many data rows you have and things like that. But you can see that you can use the command n row, which will tell you how many data rows we have. And we have 45,000 data points. So we have quite a few data points. If you have fewer data points, you might want to um, do a little smaller percentage of the data or something like that, right, for your testing there. But all we're doing, and if you remember back to how we manipulate data frames, right, we're just simply saying that we want to grab the first row, and then we're using this colon to do the sequence. Well, we're doing the colon to do the sequence. And then we're going to go to whatever 70% of the total number of rows is, and we want all the rows, right? So all the columns, sorry. Um, and so if we run that, right, you know, now see that we have 3, 31,000 observations of 45,000 data. And sure enough, if you do four, five, two, one, one time 0 0.7, right, you get three, one, six, four, seven. And so it rounds down, right? But you get roughly the same. And then the testing data, right, we're going to do the opposite way. So now we have the 15, 13, 56, 13,564 um, observations uh, that goes there. So if we add these two numbers together, 647, oh, they want to do it up there. 31647 plus 13564, right? We get 45211, which is the original number of observations, right? Um, oh, and I somehow accidentally deleted my little testing data code. Let's see if I can get that back. Oh, there we go. Oh, and I went back up here and edited this. Okay, we got it. Okay. And if you look at the testing data code, right, it starts at the 70th row and goes to the total number of rows, right, and then grabs all the, the, the columns for that data. So now we have our training and testing split up, right, um, and we can start kind of before we even get into Canon, we want to start exploring our data a little bit, right? So one of the first things we might want to do is just bar plot the data. Um, and so what this, this is doing is the first command here is going to create a data table, right? Of the output variable, which is just whether or not the person responds appropriately to the telemarketing offer um, or the positive to the telemarketing. And so as you can see, we get this little table. It says 1,840 said yes. 29,807 said no. And now we can ask bar plot to just plot that for us so we can kind of visualize it a little bit. And so one thing you might notice right away is that we have a, a very low yes rate for our overall data, right? So now we can in fact, you know, just count how many there are. That's another way to do this, right? Which is essentially what the table is doing. So this is a new way of accessing data that we haven't really talked about, but we're gonna take the train data right, the training data, and we're going to find all the rows where y is equal to yes, and then we're going to grab all the columns. And we're going to take the training data where y equals no and grab all the columns, right? And so as you can see, we get the 1840 and 29807, which is the same thing the table gave us, right? Um, and of course, the total of that is 31647. Now we're just looking at the training data right now. Now, one thing you might want to think about is what's the probability of seeing a Y versus a no, right? And so then we just basically did the same thing we did before. We take the training data, count how many where Y equals yes, and we divide by the total number of training data, right? And so this is a great way to kind of 
explore, start to explore some of the data, right? Um, in this particular case, right, um, we get that the probability of a no is 0.94 and the probability of Y is 0.058, right? So this is a kind of a beginning in kind of exploration of the data, right? And now, um, and I'll get to some of these other commands later, but you know, one of the other things we might want to do is start to think about questions like which of these which of the characteristic variables seem to actually um, um, uh, provide us with some insight into whether someone says yes or no. So in this case, what we're doing is we're plotting the training data's Y variables versus the age um, just to see what the result is, right? And what you can see is that it doesn't seem to matter whether someone how old someone is, whether they say yes or no, because we can kind of see that this data roughly looks the same for both the no people and the age. In other words, the age distribution is roughly the same. Um, this courts.save command, by the way, that's a, a way that works on the Macs to um, save um, files off um, to, uh, to, uh, from the plot, right? So I can do this. And in fact, Looks like this, I still have to update it because I need to go to the tilde one on this one. Right, and so that'll work on the Macs. It doesn't work on the PCs. On the PCs, you're gonna have to do the uh, PNG, right, that I talked about in the uh, opening lecture. So PNG, the file name, and then device that off afterwards, right? But it's kind of the same thing. This is just a shortcut in the, that works for the Macs. So, um, you know, we could also do the duration, right, of, of the previous call, right, and then see how that affects no versus yes. And this seems to be providing some insight, right, because the no's are obviously, the mean of the no's is much lower than the means of the yeses, right? So this is a variable we might want to think about as using in our classifier, right? Um, so we can again save this off. All right, and let's look at a couple more. We can look at, does it matter what month you call them in, right? Uh, what month they were approached in? There might be some differences there. It looks like maybe uh, some of the months are um, are more likely to get yeses in than other months, right? Uh, so, you know, and that could be because of seasonality, like holidays or things like that. So that's a possibility. So we'll save that one off and kind of uh, take a look at it. Whoops, get, still gotta fix this. Right. And then finally, you know, we might want to look at if someone responded positively to the previous outcome, are they likely to respond positively to this one? And it's hard to say because there's so many people who didn't respond positively to the previous outcome. But the, the you know, my the intuition says that they're roughly very similar. So the previous outcome is not a great predictor necessarily, at least from the visual inspection. Right. But we want to go through and kind of train a K nearest neighbors to find out if that's true. And I think at this point, we've gone through the data exploration, the data setup. We'll talk about K nearest neighbors in the next uh, 